feel like I've come to know Dan Riskin pretty well, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say, if you were to give our next guest the option to talk about anything he wanted, the first word out of his mouth would be bats. You've seen Dan Riskin on our show many times, talking about all things science. Well, today is the first time you are seeing him as a published children's book author, and you guessed it, the book is about bats, specifically Fiona the fruit bat. Dan Riskin is joining us this morning. Welcome to your morning. Welcome in person. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on the book. I've been noticing this in the background of your Zoom shots for months now, so <laughs> good that you're here to talk about it. Uh, tell us a little bit about Fiona the fruit bat and why Fiona? Yeah, well, Fiona is based on a bat that I met in Costa Rica when I was a young grad student, and I just, I had this moment. Is. I went into a cave. I locked eyes with a bat. It was the first time I'd ever seen a bat with one of these little triangles on its nose mm -hmm. called a nose leaf, and I just was like, I couldn't close my I was just like, this is magic. And I don't think the bat fell in love with me, but I definitely fell in love with that bat. And ever since then, I've wanted to find a way to just share that passion with people. And so uh, with this book, I'm trying to get across to kids just what makes bats so beautiful and so special. And I've done that by telling the story of what it's like to be what I think it must be like to be a young bat that has to learn how to echolocate and how to find its way in the world. Yeah, it's all about the story for this. It gives young readers confidence to try something new, not be scared, especially this time of year. We use bats to symbolize scary, and you don't like that. Right, yeah, no, so this is a bat that is scared as opposed to a bat being scary. Right. And so the idea is that, uh, uh, like, it's based on the real biology of a specific kind of bat called the short-tailed fruit bat. And the biology is really good, but it's not a biology science book, it's, it's a storybook. Mm -hmm. And the idea is this bat, is it's time for the bat to fly, she, she's grown up, she's ready to fly, but she's scared because she's gonna bump into something. She can't see anything. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't know how she's supposed to avoid hitting stuff. And so her mother tells her to listen and she doesn't know what that means. And so she has to find a way to figure that out. And this is actually, okay, that's what a are video, we seeing here? that is a video from my research on this exact same species of bat. I did, a, I did a scientific paper once on how these bats land on the ceiling. So I've interacted with these bats. I've seen how they hang, I see how they interact. I know how they take care of their pups. Um, and uh, I just I just wanted to share that. That's They're just cute little... Now, when you see this, you see cute, correct? Yeah, that one, that, that is not as cute a picture as, I have to admit, that bat looks a little gremlin-y, but I like that. There you go, <laughs> that's cute. So this, these are short-tailed fruit bats. Uh, that's a picture I took in Panama. That one in the top right there is smiling at you. They have this leaf on their nose, and these bats will, they actually call, they echolocate, but not out of their mouth, out of their nose. And oh. they flick that little nose leaf thing to point the sound where they want it to go. And so... When I was working with the illustrator, Rachel Kitsutsi, uh, I was like really specific. I was like, well, hey, when the bat's hanging, the knees have to point this way and the wings have to be just like this. And the science is all just right, but it's about the story to make the kids listen. The story is great, but the science is here too. You describe echolocation and you do it through the bat. And then you have an explainer about it at the back of the book, which I love. Yeah, this is fun. So the, the, over the course of the story, Fiona has to realize that the key to taking off and taking flight is to listen to her own voice. The thing she has to listen for is her own echo. And I think that's a nice metaphor mm -hmm. for kids finding confidence and listening to their own voice about the world. Um, but when the book's done, echolocation is this literal thing that you can talk about. And people have an ability to echolocate. If you hold, can I borrow the book for yeah, a sec? Yeah, of course, it's if your you, book. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a copy too, but I left it in the other room. Uh, if you hold something in front of your face, your voice sounds different than if you hold it away. Right. And that is the beginning of echolocation. Okay, so what if it's out here compared to here? Does that sound different? Yes. What if I put a pillow here and a book here? And so you can start to play with different objects and try to see how, whether you can perceive these things with human echolocation. And so the book gives you a start to that too. A reminder for everyone, the book is called <laughs> Fiona the Fruit Bat. I was teasing Dan earlier that you did your dissertation on bats. Yes. And I feel like maybe more people will read this, this than your dissertation on bats. This is definitely a more fun read than my dissertation. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Thanks for coming in and congrats again. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.